the first pose, we're going to be using the yoga belt. So what I'd like you to do is come into semi-supine or full grounded lying down. So uh, I'm just going to guide you through a little beginning breath practice. So if you'd like to come to lying, make sure you're warm enough. It's actually a little bit of a chilly day today, so maybe you still... Maybe you've got some long sleeves on. And as you come into lying, just make sure as well you've got enough space to be able to move your legs into the space around you. Let your body meet with the earth evenly. So you might want to lift the gaze, look down the body, make sure you're centralized, back of the skull is resting on a cushion or a blanket, and that you, as I said, have your knees bent, feet resting, or you've got your legs relaxed out. And really enter your body space. So remember, when you enter your body lying here now and you become consciously connected to your breath it's at the heart of your yoga and what we're seeking in our yoga poses is not the perfect external manifestation of every single posture but we're seeking our own perfect connection to that practice and that encompass, encompasses a strong and open body, equanimity of mind, a smooth, even breath flow, and maybe to seek some of those aspects, even when a posture becomes a little more challenging, just like life, when life gets a bit tricky, how can we retain uh, balance in the body, breath, mind, and emotions? And for me, for you, asanas in Hatha yoga, especially classical poses, are a means for us to achieve a flexibility of mind. It's, it's a way of training us to become more peaceful, open-hearted, more connected, uh, more courageous, in fact, connecting with all parts of your life. So maybe you're just feeling that you've managed to yield your body a little bit more deeply to the earth. And then begin to fold your knees into the chest. So from that lying grounded pose, just draw those knees into the chest, cradle the knees with your palms, and eyes can be open or closed, and just start to stir the hips, but do so mindfully. So as you inhale, bring the knees towards the heart and chest, and as you exhale, widen out the thighs and rotate those hips. So the femur bones are just stirring within your hip sockets. So you literally fan out the legs. It's like a line butterfly pose, but that feeling of space in the groins, and then roll those knees back together. And just enjoy the feeling also of your low back and your hips and how the back waist meets the earth. What is happening in your shoulders? Relaxing out through the face. Maybe a couple of circles in the opposite direction. So you are taking care of your own glossy range of motion. You can move much faster than I'm doing so. You can move slower. And then release your feet into supine semi. Take hold of the yoga belt. And as you curl up, align that belt around the transverse arch, around that forefoot, or it might slip into the inner arch. And can you extend your leg? Maybe bring the tails of the belt evenly. Some of us will also want to reach out through that heel of the left leg, being a little bit more grounded through that pelvis. Roll the shoulder blades away from the ears. And can you point and flex the foot and maybe even a little bit of circling around, guided by that belt. You might want to bend your knee, 
perhaps you are competent and confident in this practice, maybe your hamstrings are open. Generally, a lot of us yogis tend to have quite flexible leg muscles. Remember to micro-bend if that feels better for you. And now come into the best optimum position for this pose, which is known as Sutta Padangastasana. So the inner thighs are evenly intentional, as are the outside thighs. Front thighs, especially in this raised leg, the muscles are hugging into the bone. And you might have your arms reaching much closer towards the foot, or you may be down onto the tails of that belt. Oh, here comes Kim. Hello, Kim. Kim often wants to join in with yoga practice, uh, as you may have noticed from previous classes. So settle and feel what's happening in your practice. Feel what's happening in your breath. How can you be offering a good balancing energy to all parts of your body? And then take hold of the belt just in the right hand. So both tails of the belt as the arm reaches up towards the foot or coming lower down, perhaps even with the elbow resting on the mat. And release your leg out to the right. So firm grip on the belt, draw the right leg out to the right. Try not to rock onto that right buttock. Make any adjustments you need to. So angles can change. And then push again out through the heel. That's dorsiflexion of the ankle. And keep your shoulders nice and broad. Finding the best opening that suits your body in this present moment. And it's really important to pay attention to this deep grounding through that left hip, left knee, left thigh and into the left ankle. So hovering there for a couple more breaths. Then when you're ready, bend that right knee and bring your body back to center. Bring the leg back to center. And again, tuck the knees in. As you inhale and exhale, curl into Apanasana. Relax, perhaps take the arms overhead. Last breath in as you lengthen and find more space around the armpits. And then exhale, Apanasana. Release the feet and relax the head, neck and shoulders. And then let's find Sutta Padanguastasana on the left side. So make sure you are centered. Fold the left thigh into the chest, draw the belt around the transverse, four foot arch, or as I say, if it slips into the inner arch, okay, that's fine. But also be clear about whether you need to point or whether you can flex the foot at the ankle. So do you want to have that pointed toe foot or the flexed toe foot? If, you're, if you are able to flex and spread out through that foot, and really spread out through the mesotarsal. So you're anchoring through this right pelvic half, which is grounded with a heavy sacrum, then please choose the optimum posture variation for you. And then settle in here for a few breaths. Of course, the classical Hatha pose invites the right heel to lengthen out of that right hip. And you know, where you're practicing, if you can press your heel into the skirting board, that will give you a really good way of becoming more anchored through the body in the practice. Maybe close your eyes. Notice space around the throat, the neck and the collarbones. You might want to nod the chin towards the chest and then take the eyes back so you create a little nodding action through the head just to level off the skull and make sure you are relaxed in the hinge points of the jaw after a few breaths here draw that left leg out to the side so you'll be placing your left hand both tails of the belt i mean into the left hand and then roll that left leg out to the left and try to keep 
firmly anchored through the right leg. Remember, the option is to have the right foot grounded, right knee bent above that hip. So draw the left leg out to the left, possibly both legs reach away. If you've got a handy sofa next to you, or your maxi block stack or a shelf, you can rest the leg there, and that will help sometimes your inner thighs and hip area just to soften out a little bit more comfortably. Accessing the calm qualities of your breath, giving yourself the optimum opening without strain. Remember, nothing is achieved by force. This is less of an actively forceful stretch, and it's more of your body releasing tissues, releasing tension, letting go as you are grounded. And then when you're ready, fold the left knee in, release your belt, and then bring the knees into the chest, stir into a lovely pelvic circle, and then roll up to seated and roll over and into all fours. And I'll just have the belt nearby to be using that a little bit later on. So finding all fours and moving cat majority as well. So tops of the feet pressing down, toes tucking, pressing, tucking. Maybe a little bit of swaying side to side and the pelvic circle. And then when you're ready, offering smooth back bend as you arc your spine and the belly muscles relax, shoulder blades draw towards the back waist. Breathe in and then exhaling, rounding. Inhale, lengthen heart forward. Look to the top of the mat or you might want to bring your neck into extension as the tailbone rises, buttocks flare out, and then exhale, rounding. And we're just going to go into an easy little idea of opening out that hip again in a different way. So as you become firm and intentional in the all fours, Bring your left hip out to the left. So opening up, sometimes this is known as fire hydrant. So push the earth away, try to be really strong through the arms and shoulders, and you'll feel the muscles of the gluteal activate as you come into that fire hydrant release. And maybe again for three, two, and one, and then circle the hip. And then if you feel okay, take the right hand, half a hand forward, spread the hand and rotate and stack the left hip on top of the right. Push that left heel away. Look down towards that left ankle and then float your left thumb, left arm up to the sky. Look up to the thumb or look forward. And this is a kneeling version of Adha Chandrasana. Circle that top arm for three, two and one. Palm down, curl the toes, pose a child extended child and into your down face dog. Do pedal out the dog as you press the earth away. Walk your hands towards your feet and ragdoll. Really feel the undulation of your breathing as you find that ragdoll moment, you pull the body over the legs. And then walk back into down face dog, releasing out, bring the knees down, come and find your all fours. So perhaps your knees are on that padded area, protect the knees, roll the shoulders away, broaden the back, so it's a tabletop back, and then release the right hip up and out. As I said, often known as fire hydrant, you might want to flex or point the foot or stir the ankle, and then come back. And three more, three, two, and one. Give that hip a circle, 
Stir your hip. If you feel okay, stay balanced here. Take the left hand, half a hand forward. Rotate, a little bit of pivot out through that lower left leg can help. And then as you come into balance on that left side, stack the right hip on top of the left. Push the heel away, extend out through the leg, and then float your right arm up. Remember to breathe. Can you lift your leg a little bit higher perhaps? Is it also okay to offer some really strong, generous arm circles? It's a kneeling version of Adha Chandrasana. And then bring the right hand down, curl the toes, buttocks towards the feet. Gather that strong yoga body, that open heart, spacious mind, flexible legs as you rise up into down face dog, crouching dog, breast going towards the thighs, and then lengthen out the feet and legs one at a time. So really again, that mindful pedaling out of your down face dog. And then reach the heels back and away. Even if your heels do not land on the earth, so even if you've got that little micro bend in the knees, keep enjoying the bone building strength and the flexible strength that Adamal Krishvanasana offers you. And everybody walking in to that rag doll again. Really allow the spine to elongate. Sometimes it's a good idea to bring the hands onto the shins and draw up into halfway lift and find that backbone strength again. So it's almost like a cat, cow cat in the, in the spinal column as you draw up and away. And then rounding as you exhale. Maybe the hands are resting on the knees or the thighs. So as I say, it's like a cat cow position in halfway lift. So getting some generous movement from your pelvis and tail into the crown. And then when you're ready, tip forward, flow back down into the ragdoll. And then slide back up. So you're going to slide the hands up the legs, follow that belly and Ripple your spine up and out to mountain. At the top of the mountain, roll the shoulders. And then just a few big arm circles in each direction. And then coming to the top of your yoga mat. Funny mountain and press the palms beside the hips, crown lengthening, unlock the legs and make sure you feel super grounded at the same time as you inhale now and reach up to the sun, open the heart, turn the palms, exhale, dive over the legs and a soft, easy fold again, or Uttanasana, firming the legs. Step back, right, and then left leg to down face dog. And then curl the right toes, bend the right knee, and reach your right leg up or back, and access those flexible inner thighs, outer thighs, hamstrings, in pose of three-leg dog. Right foot forward, Turn your left heel in and down. Imagine a lovely line of energy from your right heel to the inner arch of your left foot. And then as you raise your left arm up, start to turn, look to the left thumb, and then raise the body and flow up and out into warrior two. So warrior two, 
Bring that right thigh open. You want a clear, definitive right angle between your right knee and your right ankle. And your left arm is extending out of a broad, open collarbones. Shoulder blades down the back. Feel the open space across the heart as you roll the arms forward and back. Corkscrew or rolling pin arms. So you get this lovely flossing of the nerves reaching all the way from your heart center. And then bring your palms into the heart. Press the palms together in Namaste. And as you do so, lift the torso as you firm the right thigh and bring the shoulders above the hips. Inhale, reach the arms outwards again. Exhale, tip mindfully to the right and find high trikonasana, potentially slide the right fingers down the inner seam of your right leg. Feel heavy weighted through your tailbone. And it's really important to also consider the firming of the internal rotation of this back thigh. And even you can firm the right thigh as well. You can draw that kneecap to me if that feels okay for you. Possibly hands on the hips. Can you breathe and move into the pose in its optimum position for your practice. You might have had time to bring your block or brick here, and that is another option. And you may also want to glide your left arm over the left ear. Pay attention to the even quality of the breath, the space in your yoga body. And then release your left hand to the hip. Left hand to left hip. Draw the top shoulder back and slowly pull up and recenter the body, stacking the body over the hips. And flow back to warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Inhale, exhale. Feel extended, feel stable, grounded through the feet, spacious through the arms and the heart center. And now bring your hands to the hips. And as you turn the body forward, pivot on your back foot. So you find the pelvis comes into front facing and raise the arms into Virabhadrasana one. Expand the chest, gaze into the horizon, or perhaps to the point where the wall meets the ceiling. Now let's come into our first Adha Chandrasana. Tip the body forward and reach the right palm to your right brick or block. And the block is on the right side of the right little toe, slightly in front of it. So if my right toes are at 12 noon, the block is around about 2 p.m. on the clock face. Left hand on the hip. When you're ready, hop forward. Strong grounded action in the right foot. And as you raise the left leg, slowly, mindfully pivot. Bring the left hip to stack on top of the right hip. And if you feel comfortable to do so, float your left arm up. It's really important that you engage the muscles of the core strongly as you can. When you're ready, take the left hand back onto the left hip, bend the right knee and tuck the left ankle behind the right ankle. See if you can slowly come up to stand, press the palms into the heart center, 
So deep strength as you stand onto that right leg. Left toes are tucked behind the right ankle. And then release your foot. Both feet into summer city heave. Raise the arms up to the sun. Salute the sun. And bring the palms back into the heart center. And just take a moment to access again the quality of your breath. So that's quite a strong way of conditioning that right standing leg when you're in the pose of Adha Chandrasana. Now we're going to practice the standalone balance anchoring through the left leg. And it is Uttita Hasta Palingasasana. So please use your yoga belt if that feels appropriate to you. And you might also want to bring your left hand to the wall or to a shelf or to hold a chair. So just one of the ways that we can use this practice now, the standalone balance, is to place the belt again around the ball of the right foot or that forefoot arch or inner arch. Take hold of the wall or the shelf. And then as you draw the knee into the chest, steady your body and then begin to release the leg out to the right. Now of course you're gonna to have to be mindful of the connection between the length of your belt, how you maintain that hold without gripping. And then if you feel more comfortable or you are more experienced, or today is just a really good balancing day. And especially if you're more flexible, index finger and second finger, index finger and second finger, wrap around big toe, stand tall, gaze to the horizon, and bring the leg out to the side. And then of course, as you leave your wall, left hand comes into Gyan Mudra. Other option, of course, is to hold the entire foot, outside arch, heel, or toes. Whatever you're finding, be sensible, strong, and feel good about the space you've created in your hips and in the legs and in the heart and the breath, and then release. Bring the hands to Namaste and feel good. So let's move to that simple flow on the second side, in which case you'll want to bring your brick or block over to the top left hand side of your practice mat. So walking to the top of the mat now, prepare in mountain. Sweep the arms. Inhale and salute the sun. Exhale, dive forward over the legs. Easy fold or Uttanasana. Remember to breathe and relax and possibly even a little moment to close the eyes here. Step your left foot back, high lunge. Step the right foot back, press the palms, spread out through the whole yoga body. A little bit of movement here, pedaling in your down face dog. Then bring the feet maybe closer to the midline. Curl the left knee, curl the left toes, and reach the left leg up and back or high up to the sky. Finding three leg dog, sometimes known as dog splits. Breathe and feel balanced through the upper body, lower body. Spreading out through the shoulders, widen at the upper arms. Left foot forward. Turn your right heel in and down. Make sure you have access to two really strong feet. And then as you begin to lift the body and the right arm reaches up to the sky, 
pull through strength and stability. Spread the arms. Find your first warrior two on your second side. So left knee clearly aligned with the left ankle. Strong extended back leg. Try to check that both arms are parallel. You can, of course, turn the gaze to look along that left arm, or you can stack the crown above the tailbone. And you feel well balanced in the center of your warrior two. It's such a beautiful, spacious pose, and it allows everybody to access Vilya, that vim and vigor that yoga can give us, especially in a morning practice. And then bring the hands into the heart center. Soften and lift into a firm leg. Stretch out through the foot bones. Slide the arms again on the inhalation out to the warrior two arms and then mindfully tip into high Trikonasana. Try to keep the heart center really spacious and then give yourself time to adjust. Perhaps you do need to soften your left knee. Imagine that you are just gliding along an imaginary wall behind you. Your left fingers may be skimming and resting along the inner seam of your left thigh. Maybe your fingers touch the earth. Perhaps you've been able to reach into Utita Trikonasana and bring the fingers to the ankle or the top foot. As the right arm extends overhead for some of you, remember to draw in light tone on the abdomen to support your pose. This is a pose involving lateral flexion of the torso. It's commonly, you might find that you're tipping forward and taking the heart and chest down to the mat, in which case, back off a little bit and return to the higher trikonasana position. And then everybody find that now, as you release back and return to warrior two. As you do so, corkscrew the arms, rolling the arms up and down. Feeling this energy through each arm independently, alternating or rolling them at the same time. Just getting some lovely juice into the shoulder joints. And then bring the hands to the hips and pivot. Lift up your back heel, send the pelvis facing forward, so front facing pelvis, and release your arms up, narrow or wide, into Virabhadrasana 1. And I know some of you will really want to back bend here, others might prefer to be in a neutral spine, and you may even prefer to bring your hands back into Anjali Mudra. In all instances, find time and space to breathe. Now bring your hands down to the hips, lengthen forward and bring your block stack or your maxi brick. Here is my left foot at 12 noon. So the brick is moving out to what would be, let's say 10 a.m. Hop in, enough. And then when you're ready, begin to plant courage and strength into your mindset and powerfully lift the right leg. And as you rotate the hip, right hip stacking on top of left, can you turn your body, push out through the heel? You might wish to just keep the right hand on the leg, just understanding all those little micro moves in the body as you try to find good balance today. On our Trangarasana on the left side, raise the right arm towards the sky if you can. Level off. Some of you might prefer to choose to have that left hand on a chair, a table, a wall. 
just keep going with the flow and then bring the right leg down tuck it behind the left ankle can you slowly come up to stand and as you bring the palms into namaste taking a moment to stand for a little bit longer on the strength of that left leg and then release both feet into mounting and as you release your hands just feel good about how your practice has manifested in your body so far a vision of connection also conditioning and also good spaces while being grounded at the same time now please find your yoga belt going to use the extended leg balance now moving into the opposite leg so having done other chandra on the left leg strengthening the left pelvic half etc coming to the stand alone balance in your right leg if you're using your belt carefully loop it around the left foot perhaps you're holding a wall or a shelf and as you lift into your single leg open your hip out to the side and can you draw your leg into optimum position for you so it's kind of a fairly straight leg and if you are balancing, forefinger touches thumb, Gyan Mudra, as you steady the body, or perhaps your knee is bent, you're finding something slightly different. So choose the angle that allows your hips to at the same time feel open, are not being aggravated, and you don't want to force that leg to externally rotate any further than it does naturally because that can cause aggravation to anybody with tenderness in the low back just like me you might want to practice that pose without props in which case have another go at the posture or maybe you bring your left hand to wrap around the left foot and toes or big toe mudra again and you find whatever happens in your posture with or without props and then when you come back to mountain and complete the pose on that side and you feel satisfied let's just use the belt again to get some lovely space back into the side bodies in lateral flexion so finding refinding mountain spread out through the toes raise the belt overhead and of course it can be wide or narrow breathe and then moving into Triyaka Tadasana swaying palm tree mindful breath movement and space And also allow your hip to travel to the left and to the right if that feels good and if that encourages breath and space to occur in the muscles uh, that often can create compression in the roots the intercostal muscles so you know when you're hunched over your desk and your breastbone is just sitting onto the pelvis that is never the optimum way to breathe and it doesn't encourage um, a releasement of stress. Completing your Tadiyaka Tadasana, that's your swaying palm tree, rest the arms down and then float them back up. You might want to soften the knees and offer an assisted heart opening. Urdhva Hasta Tadasana, gaze to the sky, salute the sun and relax try not to over arch your lumbar so take caution there some of you might prefer just 
arms overhead pose in a more neutral spine. One more, lifting up and out. If that feels good for your body, expanding and being grounded. And then release. Let the belt just rest to one side. Tuck the chin, slide down the legs into ragdoll. If your back feels very healthy, hold on to the elbow point and just sway side to side. And then release the buttocks down onto the yoga mat, release to seated. And as you lay down, bring the knees into the chest. Massage your back. Pop your feet and ankles down. Let the arms lay out. Quietly coming towards a close now, a short guided relaxation via a super floor twist. So staying really open now in the heart and chest. So you just let your knees and legs sway left and sway right. And of course, offer the head rolling in the opposite direction if that works for you. And once you are centered, please allow legs to release fully away into full Shavasana or remain in Supreme if that's better for your body your practice. Take a moment to become more comfortable traveling through your body now, finding your grounded spaces, finding your grounded points. So those parts of your body in contact with the earth. So let's think about maybe the heels and the feet, perhaps the calves and the thighs, certainly the buttocks and the pelvis and the sit bones, parts of your back, your shoulders and shoulder blades, backs of your arms, perhaps even parts of your hands, palms, and of course the back of the skull. If you close your eyes, if that feels good for you. Focus now on your out breath and your exhalations and allow those out breaths to let your muscles yield, to really surrender the body, the bones, the joints, the flesh, the tissues, so everything begins to spread. So you become more grounded with a natural focus on your exhalations. Now feel those delicate areas of space in your body. Perhaps around the inner arches of your feet or around the backs of your ankles. You feel the space at the backs of your knees if your legs are long in Shavasana. Is there a small pocket of air space in your lumbar back? Notice and observe. Perhaps even feel and see the space in your mind's eye between the left arm and the torso, between the right arm and the torso, between the chin and the chest, between the earlobes and the tops of the shoulders. Feel and see and sense the air in the pocket of space in each of your palms. 
And then finally, feel and sense the space all around your body. In fact, the space around the whole of your practice area. And then feel the space in the left and the right nadis, the left and right nostrils. And feel and sense the flow of your natural yoga breath. As you breathe in and invite space into your body mind, breathe out and deepen the grounding points of your yoga body. Inhaling to expand the space, exhaling to become at one with Mother Earth. Feeling of the body grounded, the sense of the space, united by your connection to this present moment and to the natural flow of your breath. You may welcome a much longer period of Shavasana because for most of us to gain all of the physiological benefits of relaxation in yoga, we do usually need to rest the body in stillness for about 15 to 20 minutes. And that is a choice that you can make. Otherwise, if you are closing now with me, gently open your eyes, gather each leg into the chest mindfully, choose to again just circle your hips or roll the pelvis, and take care as you return your body to seated. Once in seated, stack the crown over the pelvis, shoulders over the pelvis. Pause to receive what has changed. And then gently join the palms into the heart center. Gratitude for your presence here today, everybody. Have a wonderful week ahead, a wonderful day. Namaste, yogis.